and welcome to the first session of the six-part series, Analytics for Agencies, how agencies can leverage the new version of Google Analytics to improve marketing performance. I'm host, Jesse Nichols, and over the next few months, I'll be leading a series of webinars designed to introduce you to the new version of Google Analytics, as well as review ways to use the product to increase the return on your ad spend and deepen your partnership with your clients. Sessions will each be about an hour long and held once every three weeks on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. You can see the link here to sign up for our notification emails as the agenda on the right. You can also search Analysts for Agencies on Google and click on the Agency AdWords Agency Blogspot link. And you'll see our original post, which includes, again, the form to register for notifications, or the are links where you can register yourselves for specific sessions. Background on me, I manage the Partner Program for Google Analytics, as well as engage with the agency space in general through analytics trainings and planning sessions. I've also worked with as an agency lead within AdWords, and so my history working with agencies allows me the additional insight needed to address the goals, activities, and responsibilities that agencies of all types tend to encounter. All much of what I'll be tra training is relevant to any user of GA, which is how I'll refer to the product for the rest of the session. The wide-ranging uses and applications for nearly every business unit of a company. And for that reason, this one will address the specific audience of online agency media planners, creators, and buyers regardless of what type of digital media they're buying. Maybe anyone who'd like to use GA more effectively. This session will introduce you to the new version of Google Analytics. For those of you who don't know, we are in the public beta phase of a new version, including a new interface. For the next hour, I'll help you navigate the reports and analysis tools within the new interface, where features and reports are significantly different from the previous version. No higher knowledge of GA is needed to ignore the references to the previous interface. However, it will be tremendously helpful if you understand the fundamental concepts of web analytics. I'll be sharing analysis techniques, significant analysis techniques at least, within this session. It is primarily just a product walkthrough. Future sessions will focus on analysis techniques, implementation, marketing campaign tracking, and even thoughts on how your company can increase its presence in the fast-growing and highly profitable web analytics industry. So let's go ahead and get started with training. And then you're free to follow along in your own GA account, and you're also free to chat in with questions. I'll do my best to stop and take questions throughout the training. So keep in mind, an hour is a very short amount of time for such a large product. In fact, the standard training series, which is known as Seminars for Success, is our live training series. It lasts three days long. It's a paid conference that travels around the nation. So if you're interested in an extensive and in-depth multi-day training, you may need to invest in the Seminars, Success, Seminars for Success training series. So first, I'd like to discuss the analytics um, structure, just to make sure we're all speaking about the same type of information. You set your username and login, and beneath that, immediately, architecturally, you have your accounts. So a single login can have access to multiple accounts. And it's recommended, particularly for agencies, to have no more than one client per account. Why? Well, partially because every client should own their own website data. In fact, web analytics is simply your data about your own website, so it should be thought of as the client's property. And furthermore, within each account are where you start tracking web properties. Now, web properties can never be removed from one account to another. So if you start in an account and you have multiple clients being tracked within a single account, and that client, for example, leaves or wants uh, higher access uh, permissions to, that, to their own data, you can give it to them without sharing data for all of your clients. For that reason, so start a new account for new clients. Just a special tip, you can only start 20 accounts per login. 
but can give access to as many accounts as you want for a single login. So for agency reps, we typically recommend you have your client start their own account. They can give your login permission. So you can have many, many accounts have, get access, uh, many accounts having access under a single login. And recommend one client per account with an account. If your client has multiple properties, multiple websites, you can track individual properties and each and a property is simply a URL. With property, you can have multiple profiles. So what does architecture allow you to do? Well, let's give you a clear example. Let's use the account on the left. Let's say I'm, I have uh, two properties under a single client, googlestore.com, which is actually what I'll be using for the demo, and let's say googlechromestore.com. Very similar properties, but not the same. So they each get their own website, their own tracking uh, code, which is given to each web property. And for Google Store, the web property on the furthest left, I have one profile, which automatically feeds all of my data about my web property. They create a duplicate of that profile, profile number two, so that I can just look at, for example, Google CPC, just my traffic for America. So what's happening here is my web property finds the URL I'm tracking, the profile is the actual data coming through, I apply filters to that profile in order to see just the data I want. So for example, in profile number one, I might filter out all internal IP traffic just so I have a, a pure customer data experience. But in profile number two, again, have, start with the same data, filter internal IP addresses, and then filter out everything except for Google CPC. So profile number two is simply a Google CPC profile. We'll just briefly the benefits of this throughout this training, but much more of this will come in session number six, which um, I believe is happening August 23rd, and that's measuring uh, your customers' data. So your implementation and account configuration guidance will come much later in this training. I really want to concentrate on the interface and analysis for the following uh, four sessions. That's account structure. Now I'm going to go into Google Analytics. Again, this is a Google Store account, so this is not confidential or customer data. Um, you can speak to your uh, Google account rep if you have one, if you do want to see examples directly from your account. So let me pull up the Google window. I'm going to go ahead and make sure the chat window is still up. Again, if, um, if you have questions or would like answers to uh, specific questions, please feel free to chat them in, although it's possible that I'll miss them as I go along, so I apologize. So what we're looking at here is the dashboard for the current version of Google Analytics. Uh, if you hadn't seen it before, if you hadn't explored it, everybody should have access to this little red link in the upper kind of right corner called New Version. So if you haven't explored that, that is where the new version of Google Analytics is living currently. We're rolling out that version as a default. You'll no longer default to the old version. You'll default to the new version in... Um, I have anywhere between four to eight weeks. And uh, the new version is not complete yet. It is in beta, but it's fully interesting enough for me to give a demo. I'll call out when there are features that may appear to be missing, which in are just very soon on their way. So uh, if you're in the old version, and I'm going to go ahead and open this in a new tab so that we can cut it as needed in the new version. And the first thing you'll notice is the home tab. So the version of GA, again, I'll only refer to it just for comparison. Uh, you had to navigate first through all your accounts and then through all your profiles. One of the main benefits you'll see over and over again for the new version of Google Analytics is speed and accessibility, which will allow you to get very deep into analysis very, very quickly. Uh, you'll see here a home screen for uh, um, sorry, a home tab tab that always bring back a list of all accounts and profiles. No need to scroll through pages, no need to expand the number of rows. They're all right here. You'll see this functionality, which will allow you to quickly search through your profile names and URL or web properties. So I'll, uh, I'll give a demonstration of this in further detail in just a moment, but you can see how each of these are web properties and each identified with a unique Profile ID. So this is account number 30481. That's the one we'll be working for. 
and these are other account numbers for other effectively clients. So my accounts, the, the web properties within my accounts, here are multiple profiles within web property. So two ways you can scroll either scroll through all of your entire list and find the, the profile that you'd like to work or you can simply type in the name. To note is if uh, this search works at the profile name level, but also at the uh, the web property excuse me web property level. So if you are searching for a profile that has the same name as your web property. It's tremendously difficult to find it unless you give it some unique identifiers. So, for example, we do have Google.com profiles, but with unique identifiers, so typing in the URL will bring up every profile of, within that web property. So we end up adding a few identifiers, just making it explicit as to what's included in this profile. Much more, much easier and more efficient to search. You might notice is that we link deep into the report suite automatically. So you, we'll explain these sections within ju in just a moment. But if you know that you'd like to go directly to the content section of a certain profile, you can do so. If you know you'd like to go to traffic sources in a certain profile, you can do so. Um, some questions that, that refer to things, things that appear to be missing, know that in the old version of GA, you used to see top level statistics that were helpful to some, uh, although our team is investigating the uh, the demand that puts on our uh, collection to report top level metrics for every account. And I can tell you that here very briefly. Um, we we felt that for the sake of speed and navigation, it was uh, beneficial to leave that out of the current account home. That doesn't mean so. You can see here that were, were these to have visits, it would show uh, top level metrics here. So that doesn't mean we'll never bring it back, but it will come back in this current iteration. And again, that's for the sake of speed and navigation. So you may see that in different report suites. Uh, settings, you'll notice, is no longer linked to from here. Settings are all accessed within this gear icon. And here you can really see the account structure I was referring to before. So I'm logged in. I have multiple accounts. Each of these accounts represent a single client, so to speak. Each client, they may have multiple web properties. Each of them are a different URL. And within each property, you can see multiple profiles duplicated over and over again so that we can filter out different types of information. And again, if you want to see the entire account home, I simply click the home icon. You can see how quickly this is, how quickly this works. Uh, really phenomenal navigation. So I'm not going to go deeply into any single report. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this to show you where this lands you. This lands you on what's called My Site. Now, so you may not see all the tabs within this, uh, within the upper section, because uh, this account is opted into all betas. Uh, nothing too confidential. The My Conversions tab will be coming out very soon. And we, of course, are agency partners. But you can see Custom Report has its own tab. It's segments and exporting is much clearer. Those three features I actually won't be going over until the next uh, session in three weeks from now, uh, just because there's a few updates they'll be getting between now and then that will make them much more powerful and relevant. So we're going to wait on those three things. But one thing you might notice is that Dashboards has its own tab. You're no longer landing on your dashboard, which was the case which was the case before. And I'm going to try to find the example. There we go. It's landed on your dashboard in the old interface. The new one, you actually have to navigate, and you get to create several dashboards. And these are sticky to your login and your profile. So, so, so the dashboard function works very similarly in that you can drag and drop sections. You can even edit certain sections if you'd like to see different types of charts that would be more meaningful and make custom widgets or custom gadgets, whatever you'd like to call them. So making the gadgets that are most relevant to you a great advancement in GA. Adding to dashboard, I know that's been a common request that is coming soon. So just like in the previous version, when you're looking at a specific report, you could add a report to the dashboard and it would show up automatically. You will soon be able to do that in the new version of GA as well. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you how clean and simple it was to create new multiple, to create multiple new dashboards have them listed out, and again, you'll soon be able to email and export these uh, for distribution as well. Really delete dashboards, uh, but do be cautious with that since uh, um, 
dashboard leak very quickly without much of a confirmation. Multiple dashboards, one of the brand new features within the new version of Google Analytics and a really fun one too since uh, you can create one for uh, individual campaigns, you can create dashboards for the different account managers who are working on this uh, client, you can create it for different representatives or different contacts within your client's business, but the dashboards has been a long requested feature of GA. Either click on the reports section or just simply click back on my site. One of the great things about GA, the notion of GA, is that it, it will be sticky. So if you were looking deep in the report suite, I try to navigate that too much, deep within the report suite uh, and go over to the dashboards and you come back to my site or you go to custom reports and you come back to my site, it'll be back exactly where you left off. Dashboards and uh, what I'm going to do now is, is show you a combination, again, of specific analysis tools from the, the most basic to uh, a few intermediate level ones. And again, we'll be saving the most advanced as well as advanced analysis techniques primarily for future sessions. So uh, again, what I'll be showing here are things like, uh, again, this is the overview page. And previous overview pages were much more like static, static dashboards where you couldn't do much analysis. New overview pages still give you the top level metrics that you need. But you can also navigate through most any report within that section. And you can see it'll change the metrics. Um, it'll change the top level report that, it, that, uh, that you'll need to see. So as you uh, explore the overview sections, be sure to click through these different tabs top-level analysis, and if you need to see the entire report, you can dive directly into it. So again, speed, accessibility, and, and quickness of analysis. First, you'll note the date range is still in about the same place, although it looks slightly differently, uh, slightly different. You can uh, choose from some preset date ranges. You can still compare to past. For those who never used this functionality before, it's, uh, it's very simple to simply select the date range that's relevant to you. And when you're past, although it defaults you to the previous range, uh, you can select your range as well and compare it to that past time range. So in uh, the event, the date feature hasn't changed much from the previous version and, uh, and again, still a very uh, what you see is what you get interface. So date range changer, uh, you can see that the left-hand navigation and this is one of the smaller but more appreciated uh, updates to the new version of Google Analytics. It's very, very quick to navigate. It opens up, and you can go deep within the navigation tree without having to wait with the, for each report to load. If you haven't explored the, new the old interface much, you used to have to click into individual reports, wait for it to load, and then you could go into it. This new uh, quick tree, quick navigation, allows you to navigate right to where you want it and, end the report, and, and simply load the report that you want right away. Way. So the sections have not changed from the uh, old interface to the new. Visitors still indicates characteristics or dimensions of the visitor that uh, that came with them as they arrived. So the way I like to characterize these this information is this is hard facts about the visitor themselves that don't change throughout a session. So what location did they come from? We'll go through individual um, report moment, but we. Are they new visitors? Or are they returning? These don't change throughout the course of their visit. And the most part, even with some new technologies, don't change much over, over time. This is where we'll also get a lot of information about the technology that they're using. Text sources, as it indicates, will tell you about the last site that sent you here, that sent your visitor to your site. So uh, this will show you, will show you information about the, the person themselves, Traffic sources is how they got to your site for as much as we can know, and there are limits to that. Content will show you their experience while on your site. And then conversions, which we're actually not going to go over in tremendous detail today, uh, will we'll talk to you, will tell you about um, what, what experiences they completed on your site. So again, who are they? How did they get there? What are the ones they're there? And did complete some valuable activities that you've, uh, you've deemed as such. Okay, we'll go into uh, some individual reports. We'll be showing, I'll be showing uh, brief glimpses at reports. Uh, you'll need to navigate to these to figure out which ones are the most relevant to your specific position. But nonetheless, many of these are, are, are valuable. 
either way. So we'll first do the recency and frequency report. The first thing you should notice about this report is that it's really one, one report. It's called the frequency and recent receipt report. In, in the last version, that was two different reports. And one of the ways we've made our report suite more compact is by tucking reports right here. And you can, I don't know if you can see my mouse, I assume you can, but right above the count of visits column, you'll see viewing count of visits and then use since last visits. And this is what I call the simple segmentation tool. Uh, the count Visits to all of your visitor segments. One, you know, visit, visitors who came, who've come once, visitors who've come twice, who've come three times. These are different segments. The segment of visitors who have come once, the segment of visitors who have come twice. So that's a full way to segment your traffic. Away are the days since they visited last. The reason this is important is as we navigate through reports, keep in mind that there may be a report that appears to be missing when in fact it is just within a simple segmentation of another report. And again, this is to make our reporting suite less bloated, more compact and streamlined, and make some very relevant and closely related reports easily accessible. The uh, other thing I'll note about the, the uh, overall look and feel is that um, Excuse me. As the uh, location report, there are a few of them that have changed names or become more compact. So the map overlay was a very common re report that people accessed. It's now called location report. So if you feel like you're missing a report, please go ahead and, and uh, you know click through. Where you thought it used to live, and it, it uh, very well may have just changed names slightly. So map overlay report, a very uh, a, a fan for it. Uh, I'm going to show here our Scroll down. Um, that you still have a very clickable interface. It's still very easy to dive through reports. So the overlay, if you want to see one country, you can click into individual countries. If you want to see one state, you can click into an individual state. But what I want to point out is the segmentation indicator, the set indicator. This tool, this little pie chart, will give you a sense of just what percentage of your total visitors you're looking at at any given time. And the reason that's important is that you may not realize that the report you're looking at only represents a small portion of your total visitors. So it's just one way of giving you context on what you're looking at. So if I dove into California, you'd be looking at an even smaller percentage of your total visitors. Again, very important to keep context. And uh, I'll press the back button to get back to the U.S. And down the screen, what used to be tabs, down, uh, above the um, the actual reporting grid are now tabs right under the Metrics Explorer. So this, these these links are known as the Metrics Explorer, and they show you uh, the metrics grouped in the in a similar way as they were in the old interface. So if you have goals in, enabled, which are done at the profile settings level and highly recommended, they'll show your goal set. If you have e-commerce enabled, which takes additional code configuration, uh, that will show in the e-commerce uh, metrics explorer. And within each of the metrics explorers, you can explore different graphs with your uh, within your trend or with, within your within your graph interface. So, uh, for example, the first metric explorer showing you how many visits came from each state based on a heat map, the dark the state, the more visits came from. Uh, the next shit will give you a sense of how much revenue is coming from each state, cost transaction rate is for each state. And this metric explorer I'll show you in different reports works about the same in, in most reports. It basically changes the graph uh, to you an additional set of context. It's not uncommon if you're looking in the U.S. and you're looking at visits for uh, New York, California, Florida, and Texas to be the darkest because they have the greatest internet populations. It can be much more insightful to understand which have the highest e-commerce conversion rate, which states have the highest per visit value, or which states bring in the most revenue overall. So I highly encourage you to use the Metrics Explorer. And you'll see, uh, and let me back out to the uh, to the world of the world, you'll see our simple segmentation tool, and uh, this will show you just a sim simply a different slice of the data you're looking at. Right, looking at visits, 
And if I see all countries, that's what it defaults to. If I want to see all cities, again, simple segmentation, all continents or continent region, all comes through the simple segmentation tool. Alternative, alternative to drilling into individual images on the map, you can click through country and territory, individual regions, and it's just the same as working on the map. And all I'm intending to show here are uh, uh, just base functionality that you may have known in the last interface, making sure that you can still access it in the new interface. One uh, feature that I, I've, uh, I've known to, although gotten significantly more advanced, is sometimes hard to find. The search functionality used to be located below the report. It's now located above the report, but it works the same way. as It's one click. As soon as you click on it, if you just need to find a single state or a single row with your, the report you're looking at, you search, and there you have it. You may deactivate searches, everything else back, and you'll see that through those little X boxes that, um, excuse me, you'll see the X box on the right of the search functionality. It's going to be able to add into an unfiltered search. So one thing you may have noticed is that when you search, when you apply search as active. D search, simply click the X box to the right. Still expand rows as needed. I'm going to have to move the chat box around here. You can expand rows as needed up to 500. You can go directly to, to individual pages. You can still paint or go to the next page and return. All that, uh, none of that has changed. Um, and that's all I wanted to show you for the map overlay report. So again, feel free to chat in questions. This is just a translation of the old interface to the new asking if you can add widgets at the report level. This is similar to the add to dashboard functionality that existed within the old interface. Uh, that will appear uh, near the export button. It's not up there yet, but again, as a beta product, we're still uh, pulling off some development. So for example, emailing is not an option right now. It will come out very soon. Dashboard, not an option. Exporting as a PDF, all of these will be coming out very soon, but I th saw it, still saw it valuable to start the session off and show you what we could. So just call out to some of the other in this suite. Custom variables is uh, is a feature that needs to, and user defined variables are features that need to be activated uh, with additional tags. So don't be surprised if you don't see any data there. I'll do more with uh, with uh, your, the session on measurement and implementation or fifth section. Pardon me. Uh, within behavior, you'll see. Uh, You'll see much you've known maybe otherwise, such as uh, depth and uh, length depth of visit, which we now call engagement. Within technology, you'll see your uh, tech, the technology that the visitor used to get there to your site. And again, this is very important to notice the simple segmentation. Many reports, which made the reporting suite look, seem very lengthy, are now tucked within other reports within the simple segmentation tool, so operating system, screen resolution, and others that can be very important to website optimization are found within the simple segmentation. And we have our dedicated mobile report. Mobile visitors are tracked automatically, so long as your site can appear on a mobile phone and it appears with the tracking code, your mobile visitors will come through. Actually, that's rather interesting. Probably because of Google I.O., you can see our Google Store is increasing in traffic today. And then you've got operating system solution, very important for mobile uh, optimization and service provider. Although we don't currently offer a mobile model, it is something we're considering. So this section, again, a lot of superficial changes, some very interesting changes for analysis. I'm going to continue to go over some of the basic features, but then we'll hopefully make you feel comfortable as you navigate the new interface. To traffic sources. The all traffic report um, what used to be known as all traffic sources is now within incoming sources, and that's differentiated from AdWords, since AdWords has an expanded report suite that we'll go over in a moment. Incoming sources uh, contains all traffic. Direct, for those of you who aren't familiar with the terminology, direct is when someone dropped in to your site by URL indirectly. Refer is when one site linked to your site. Obviously, for 
people who came through some sort of search engine, paid and non-paid, and paid, and campaigns. I want to make two quick points about these sections, and I'll reiterate them in a moment. In order for something to be tracked as a campaign, in order for a visitor to be tracked as a campaign, they must be tagged. And what does that mean? It means they must have landed on your site with specific URL tags that Google Analytics can read and interpret. So advertisers, we know we all have, uh, we have ad content and copy. That copy leads to a specific destination URL. That destination URL, in order to show up as a campaign, Google Analytics needs URL tags. We'll be doing this in the third section, measuring all media, uh, how to create and manage a robust, camp a robust campaign tagging system so that you measure all, diff all types of digital media, but until those tags are applied, they will not show up in the campaign reports. Similarly, paid is a function of paid media. Therefore, it must have been, or uh, the way that Web Analytics and Google Analytics uh, specifically work is that it must be tagged in order to have showed up not only as a campaign, but turn up as anything but free. So Google Analytics, by default, as does all web analytics, track uh, either direct, again, they typed it in directly, a URL, as in a site linked to your site, one site linked to your site, uh, or a search engine. But it's all, it's all free, and it's all effectively organic until tagged as otherwise. So if you'd like something to show up as a paid campaign or as a paid search, uh, it needs to be tagged, and again, that'll be covered in measuring all media. But you're welcome to look up URL tagging or campaign tagging for Google Analytics to learn more. As I said all traffic. Um, I want to show again the uh, the metrics explore for this, since it does change a trend line as opposed to a um, country by country heat map. And you see here. Some lines are, are more insightful than others. And with the version of Google Analytics, this is an uh, update that came in the, the old version. You have different types of goals that you can set. So, using your time on site for um, allowing goal to be complete if a certain number of minutes were spent on the site or a certain number of pages were spent on the site. But in allowing yourself to um, fit this trends peaks, values in your conversion rate metrics can be very helpful for additional context. And you have the simple segmentation explorer. I'll point out here, just as in the map overlay, you can drill into specific segments to explore them more. Uh, and I drilled into just google.com referral. So this isn't a search referral. This is just uh, a Google property since I'm exploring the Google store. Other parties sending traffic to us, a segment that we're looking at gets edited. So all I'm trying to call out here again is being aware of what uh, part of data you're looking at. So as you continue to explore, you're not getting uh, lost or, or out of context. All traffic report, again, I'm not going to explain every report for the sake of time. All traffic can be very helpful for understanding who are all, where are all the different places that uh, visitors are coming to from my site. And since you have a considerably high number of sites sending you traffic, you may want to consider expanding this or ordering it for offline uh, um, investigation. Investigate certain types of traffic. Again, Search Suite has its own report suite. And differentiated between organic and paid. Now, because it's the Google Store account, Permanently large of traffic to this, but we do have enough for general examples. Although, again, it will separate them from organic and paid uh, immediately. So, if you'd like to see your organic and paid traffic together, I have to go back again to the simple segmentation. And what this is doing is all of your traffic that is keyword traffic, regardless of whether it's organic and paid, together, and the performance and performance metrics along with it. Something all out here is we are going to be inserting the visits column right before hitting orders so that conversion rate gets a bit more context. But uh, again, the keyword, the all keyword report doesn't exist as it used to. You need to do overview and segment by keyword. When within a single section, again, this is organic traffic or paid traffic for all search engines. So this isn't differentiating between just Google or just being search engines. These are all search engines. And again, you'll see a few additional helpful um, 
segments or segmentation tools for things like SEO or just simple campaign analysis, landing pages, sources. If you really need to know, um, broken up by, by uh, different traffic sources, who's sending you the most traffic or, or what types of traffic each one is sending you, uh, it's within simple segmentation. Similarly with paid. Campaign reports. Um, uh, clarify uh, what you would typically see in here, especially if you aren't uh, doing a lot of campaign tagging. Not set is perfectly normal to see within this report. This is simply all traffic that doesn't have a campaign variable set to it. So again, if it doesn't have a tag, it's not seen as a paid visitor. I'm looking at all of my visits. Most of my visits are not tagged. That's what that means. And I just wanted to call that out to avoid any confusion. Uh, but again, and it, for the campaigns that you do have tagged, regardless of the source, if it's Google campaigns, social campaigns, uh, uh, display, other, other search engines, they all show up in a single report. I can't emphasize the importance of this report enough. If you, effective, if you are effective and consistent at tagging all your online campaigns for Google Analytics, you'll have a single report that shows all possible, um, or that shows metrics for, for every campaign that's driven traffic to your site. This doesn't show visit metrics like impressions or clicks. This is all post visits, so visits once they're on your site, what else have they done? Um, a tremendously powerful report if you are measuring all of your media. Final uh, call out some of the improvements to the AdWords reports if you haven't been in there for a while. Uh, the AdWords reports, a phenomenal reporting suite and the, the tightest integration on the market for the AdWords, regardless of what web analytics tool you're using. Again, I suggest navigating through this if you'd like to uh, use the simple segmentation tool. It can give you uh, an analysis at a speed that is unseen even in your AdWords account. But in reports that you may not have seen report, may not have seen report before, uh, we now report by hour and day of week that the visitor visited. In case you'd like to participate in ad scheduling, uh, we'll try to expose the destination URL uh, when relevant. We do more context than ever on your content placements. So if they're an automatic or a manual placement, you can click in and see exactly what domain um, was purchased or even the URL that was purchased. And that's all within the placements. And newer positions, an old report that you've known and loved. If you've used GA before, you have a sense of exactly how keywords are performing at different spots in uh, the Google search property. Move on to the content section, and since this is going about the pace that, uh, that I expected, I'm going to stop and just scroll through and make sure there are any questions that I can answer, uh, that I can address. Let's see. Um, there are a number of questions about the date range resetting. Uh, I'm not sure if I can replicate that behavior in here, but the date range should be should maintain as you navigate reports. Uh, I apologize if I have to if I have to speak on behalf of the product at any point. Uh, they're, they're undergoing developments. There's actually a large push this week that will you know bring the product to parity with the old version as well. Um, segmentation by province for Canada. You can actually see that this report was um, in the same date range. So the question around uh, whether or not date ranges will stay the same as you navigate through reports, uh, that the answer should be yes. Um, provinces, navigating through provinces through Canada, we have considered but have not yet planned out any uh, ability to segment um, within uh, regions for every country. And I think that Canada would be first in line if we were to be developing for that, but unfortunately not planned in the, next, the new version of GA. Um, the dollar index. Dollar index is actually being re the value of dollar index is being as a metric is being uh, reconsidered right now. So it's not going to be available in the new interface until a decision has been made on that. About setting goals, we'll be make we'll, we'll, we will cover setting goals, determining the right goals, and how to set them in the uh, in session number five. Again, I believe that's August 23rd. 
and that's, uh, that, will, that will go over full feature implementations of Google Analytics from soup to nuts, a configuration, implementation scoping, implementation planning, and delivering implementation guidance when you don't own the website. about how goals are separated. Each goal set can have up to five goals in it. So you get four goals of five per profile, and you can get, uh, so that means you can get up to 20 goals per profile. And as you navigate through, the goals are clumped together for ease of, uh, ease of viewing and navigation. Why not your configurations can be migrated from the old version to the new version of GA. That includes advanced segments, custom reports, uh, scheduled emails, there will be methods in place to uh, migrate over your, uh, your previous settings. Uh, from Dan, will, searches able to, will, will we be able to save searches? Uh, not an option right now uh, to save search like you would in an advanced segment, but any feedback that I'll pass back to the team. The GAIQ test. The GAIQ, for those of you who don't know, is a certification exam that tests uh, general skills with GA across the board. So this is uh, some implementation, some technology, some analysis, some navigation. Uh, the test will be updated to reflect the new interface, but that won't happen until uh, the new interface is default and you can't go back to the old the old version. Um, but that's, uh, you know, it, it, it is a good baseline, a good benchmark for just making sure that you're able to um, answer common questions about the product. about fast access mode? That's actually a great question because this rolled out just last week. Fast access mode is the new way we're referring to sampling because there was a lot of confusion about what, what was happening when we showed uh, that data was being quote unquote sampled. Um, and I can speak about that a little bit now, but I'll speak about it much more next time. Fast, fast access mode is simply indicating the, the fact that we are results based on a sample of your data. But the reason that we're doing that is in order to pull the report up quickly. So we large data sets, uh, it's difficult for us to uh, quickly generate reports without um, uh, using a sampling calculator. Where we, we look at visits, we take a percentage of them that we think represents the whole, and then we show that, uh, we show that, that report instead of using the, the quote unquote true numbers. And then that's important is not only does it help you analysis with quicker reports, uh, but really what you're looking for with analytics are significant trends and, and the hard numbers, uh, although helpful, um, can be more work than, than, than worth. And uh, the quote that I like to throw out there is that, you know, perfect can be the enemy of the good. And what we're really looking to do is aid uh, quick analysis rather than uh, regardless of how long it would take, get you the exact accurate numbers every single time. That, again, that these significant these sampling calculations are highly signif uh, statistically significant and uh, and very helpful to use. Did averages be available? We do have a feature known as um, weighted sort, and rolling out again very soon in the new interface. conversion, you should be able to select your conversion if you have uh, e-commerce enabled. One might, uh, might require more follow-up if the uh, answer isn't clear. A few questions around specific reports, so I'm going to go ahead and dive into the content section, and again, I'll try to finish up with questions towards the end. Content section, again, this is about what people did when they were on your site. I'm going to show you a few of my favorite reports, and I'll conclude with a few, events, uh, a few comments on, a, on the golden e-commerce overview. Uh, but again, we're going to get into a lot more great analysis techniques uh, on, on future webinars. Again, the site content is uh, where you may have known to be top content. That's now called pages. And pages also holds the page title report. So pages is the actual, UR the actual URLs on your site. Page title was the information passed. Uh, it's a, a little bit more human friendly, but it uh, depends on how you've named your pages. Um, that's within a single report. 
these, you're able to drill into specific pages. Uh, you've got your Site Explorer with a few new metrics, but you've got the Navigation Summary. This is a page that I, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with from the old interface, but when you click into this, you're able to see a uh, simple path analysis. So what pages they came to before they got to this URL, where did they go most commonly after, did they visit it then from outside the site, or was this part of a longer experience? Summary, very helpful. When you explore, um, you, you can uh, view a, few more, uh, a bit more data about this, but I'm going to go into deep analysis in and, and later sections. Just again, note that you may be looking at a very, very small percentage of your total page views. Even these, uh, many, many of your visitors saw this page within their, somewhere within their experience. Uh, content drill down. A uh, quick remark about this is that uh, this basically reflects your URL. So if uh, we're looking at googlestore.com, then what this section is telling you is how many people visited pages where this first directory was something like wearables or accessories. Regardless of what came after that second dash, there are many pages within the accessory section. This gives you a top level understanding of what sections of your page of your site were people visiting. And as you click into a single one like accessories, within the accessory section, what specific pages were people seeing and so on and so forth. If you have multiple multiple levels to your URL, then you continue to click in. Landing pages and exit pages, both great for inspiration on uh, website optimization. Um, quick remark on landing pages. The, um, these are different than visits in that with landing pages, you're looking at just the number of visitors who came from outside the site. So if you have 141,000 visits to the home page, that doesn't mean it had that many visits overall. That's just how many times someone landed from outside the site. And so similarly, are how when someone did land from outside, how uh, how many of them left right away? So the bounce rate on these pages can look often exorbitantly high, and that's again because it's not counting all visits; it's just how many people actually landed on the page. So uh, just a, a note about the analysis here: it, it it can be a little deceptive when you're looking at. And then trade. So 185,000 visited this page, and 72% of them bounced. It was 100, or 70, 75% out of uh, out of the 141,000 that visited. So uh, just just keeping in context what these uh, how these metrics change as you navigate the reports. Just about really quickly, site speed a new report that does require implementation, uh, and this literally came out uh, last week. So we're just starting to uh, implement test this on our on our own site. But the landing the site speed report does require an additional tagging script to be activated. So events events are uh, um, an additional tag, but but great for things like video tracking or monitoring how people are engaging with social objects on your site. Uh, flacking all great with events. Search also takes uh, additional implementation, but it depends on your site. So site search is how people are using the search functionality within your own site. And again, you find uh, that some reports that you used to see now is within the site selector, or sorry, the segment selection tool. Finally, with conversions, goals and e-commerce report suite, uh, and these need to be Act, the goals need to be configured within profile settings. It needs to be configured within um, with, with additional tags on your actual site. And again, this information flows back through to all of your other reports through the map explorers. So these features need to be activated in order for it to show up in other in other uh, in other reports. That is what I'd like to show for the new interface. Uh, this product, I think it's a lot more fun once you get to the actual analysis, but it's really hard to get through analysis and train to the new interface at the same time. What I would recommend is go back, explore your own uh, analytics account, start to click around, get comfortable with the navigation, and we'll talk a lot more about analysis.
analysis. But trying to get comfortable with navigation and analysis at the same time can be a bit overwhelming. Just know that we're going to chunk this into to small bits and help understand the product uh, holistically by the end of this uh, series. So, uh, with five minutes to spare, I'm going to stop the recording. You'll be able to use this for uh, future trainings if needed. But we'll be posting a recording of this on the Agency Land portal, which you can again get to by searching uh, Agency Land on Google.com. We'll also be posting recorded sessions on the Agency blog. So uh, watch out for those. Thanks again for attending, everyone. I'll be hanging out for questions, and uh, have a great day.